am I in? I sure hope so. I had to go out and come back in two times. Hello, everybody. So this is funny. My hair is doing a weird thing here. You'll have to apologize my hair tonight for my hair tonight. It's acting up. <laughs> so anyway, I'm all excited. And I know, you know how, well, I don't know if y'all ever know, but what it does is it's, it has a thing going around. When you click go live, it has a thing going around. And I kept watching it and watching it. <laughs> I thought it's not going to let me come in. So hello, everyone. Hello, Diane57. So for those of you who belong to our group SIO, we had an exciting time last night where Jason and Akko introduced us to... My hair is going to drive me nuts. So hold on just a second. I put these little side combs in, but they were looking freaky. So <laughs> I'm just going to go back to my whatever. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, so we had a lot of fun because um, Akko and Jason and then Susan Smith and we all did a Zoom, and that was so exciting. So what we're going to try to do is to have maybe some Zoom times. I think they're going to do it next Monday. Was it 6 or 6.30? I'm not really sure. But anyway, it's fun because we'll get to see and hear each other. And if it makes you feel any better, I'm not going to put any makeup on. I'm just going to relax. I'm not going to worry about it. So that's something to look for, and it's for all members of our Our Time to Quilt special groups I.O. group. So if you'd like to join our groups I.O., just shoot me an email at Our Time to Quilt, and, um, and that's at, oh, it didn't type out. And uh, hello, Kim and Diane57, Teresa Djokovic. Polly, hi, sweetheart. Oh, it's so good to see all of you. So Marsha's here. Yay, Marsha. So it is, oh, look who it is, Sherry Mercurio. Am I saying it right, Mercurio? That's a lovely name. Vicki Lemire is here. So it is so good to see you. So anyway. And before we go tonight, I was thinking, I was just wondering how y'all are doing, staying hunkered in, wanting to know if you wanted to do another sew-in tomorrow. Maybe we could do it tomorrow um, afternoon again, like we did the one on Tuesday. I'm not sure. Let's see how it goes and tell me what you think. You might be too busy. I was noticing. Oh, I'm sorry about being frozen and buffering. Um... I did notice that Alex Anderson, a lot of people are doing, trying to do the, okay, we're shut in, so let's have fun together. So I think that is wonderful. So, uh, okay. I am so sorry about that, Vicki. Don't you just hate that? So anyway, I've been doing all kinds of things today. And uh, I'll get ready to show you. Oh, yes, I just saw Susan last night, and she's beautiful. She's lovely. And I got to see my Nikki. You know how exciting, exciting that was? It was wonderful. I'm sorry I got so tired. And you know what, Susan? I fell asleep on the couch at 8.30 at night. I never do that. But I, was, I, I ate dinner and then just sat there and dropped right off to sleep. So I'm sorry I was too tired to come back and chat with y'all. What time is it Monday? I was telling people you have to be a member of our group. And um, so if they said, shoot me an email at ourtimetoquilt at twc.com, I will send you an invitation. I said perfectly. Woo! I did one thing perfectly. <laughs> So I'm very excited. Got pails in window and floor wall. Oh, sorry. About Monday at 6.30 p.m. And I want it. I mean, I don't know how you feel, Susan, but I think it should be members of our group only. And if they want to join, send me an email and I will sign you up. And that way, if we don't want to put makeup on, if we don't want to do our hair, 
we just want to come in and chat and have fun. I loved it. I'm so tickled that Akko and Jason did that for us. So, oh, good, good, good. So it is go so good to see everyone. I'll show you what I'm working on and kind of tell you a few things. Um, also, tonight's the night that if you want to have fish fabric sent to you, I've got it. Hold on. I've got stuff thrown everywhere. I've been down here since 2, two o'clock, and so I've got stuff everywhere. But anyway, I've got all the threads and yarns and fish and octopuses and all this cut out, and I've got envelopes. If I've never mailed something to you before, please send me your name and address and um, to our time to quilt at twc.com. Now, you have to sh show me how you're working on it. Maybe you've just gathered your fabrics. Maybe you just have your background. But I'm not going to send you anything unless I know you're really working on it. And uh, because what I'm doing is I'm sharing. Oh, I wanted to show you this too. Um, look at these fibers. This is tree tinsel. Now, I don't think this will, I don't think this will melt like the Angelina fibers. But whoever is making jellyfish, is this cool or what? So I know... Who was it? Kathleen is going to be doing jellyfish. I'll make sure to send her some of this. See, I collect just weird stuff. Um, I found my whole bag of Angelina fabrics, like I was telling you. Where are they? Come on, here they are. Remember I told you I have all kinds of colors? Well, you know I've got the pink. These are precious to me. I have two colors of pink. This one is peony. <laughs> Did I do good pronouncing that? This is a lighter pink. See the difference? More of an orangey. Then I have a pale green. I have a dark, deep, dark blue. I have... Peacock, which is an ocean color. And I have gr silver, silver iris. Somewhere I had a whitish clear, but it must be in a project bag somewhere that I was using it. But I'll send you a few fibers of each of these so you can kind of add them where you want. Oh, no, honey, I'm sorry. Oh, Susan, I'm so sorry. Ah, oh, isn't it hard? I, would, I hope it had nothing to do with the virus, but boy. Hi, Bert. And, um, <laughs> I bet you did have a good time, Susan. I told Mark, I said, I wonder if they're going to realize I don't drink. I... I'm just allergic to it. It makes me feel awful. So when we get together, y'all drink all you want. I'll just st sit there with my soda or something, you know. But I'm so glad it was fun. So, yes, make sure that uh, you can get into the group. And that way we can, yeah, we're not going to do makeup. We'll just wear whatever. I'll wear my T-shirt and T-shorts. And we're just going to come in naturally because that way it's more fun. And you know what? I love all of y'all. I don't care what you, whether you've got makeup on, your hair nice. It'll make me feel better. Because I look a lot different without makeup on. <laughs> and my hair curled. So, anyway. That's great. But I'm sorry, Sue, hon. So, let's see. Um, Kath Kathleen Ziegler. Um, well, and you know, talking about the drink. I think the reason I'm allergic to it is both my grandfathers were alcoholics. And, you know, they say sometimes in alcoholic families, I don't know if you can't process it or digest it right or break it down right, and that's me. I get a powerful headache, and it always looks so good. Nope, doesn't work. <laughs> so, hi, Cheryl Hogan. 
making a pie. Oh, send me some of that pie, Cheryl. Kathy Mitchell is here. Aww. Yeah, Kiwi joined in on the talking because I was eating dinner. I had just started eating dinner, and she always comes and joins in for dinner with us. And she loves it because I give her boiled egg, banana. I give her blackberry. I give her grapes, apple, um, kale, lettuce. You know, she loves. And last night, her favorite thing was some of the baked potato I gave her. And, of course, I give it to her without anything on it. But anyway, but we will. We will get back. We, I, I'll have her in another time. So, brownies. Ooh, I've been wanting to make some brownies. Ooh, that sounds good, Lisa. And Lisa, I saw you making the blocks today from the shirts. I think that's wonderful. Lisa goes to Goodwill, picks up button-down shirts, and comes home and carves them into useful fabric. So I saw that, Lisa, and thank you so much. I enjoyed it. So, and Lisa, I don't know if you belong to our group's I.O., but we now know how to do Zoom. It's a meeting platform where we can all see each other and hear each other. And I got so tickled listening to Bonnie. I hadn't heard her voice much. But you have to be a member of our group's I.O., to come join us because we're not going to wear makeup. We're not going to wear uncomfortable clothing. I'll leave it at that. And we're just going to be comfortable, come in and chat. So if you want to, Reese's bars, whoa. If you want to join that, please send me an email at our time to quilt at twc.com. And that way, if we get you in the groups IO, you'll know when we have our Zoom chats. So, oh, pecans. I love pecans or pecans. <laughs> I just say pecan. <laughs> Probably the same way I used to, I used to say peonies. <laughs> now I think, oh, I'm so refined. Peony. Oh, yeah. Got to put my pinky up. Peony. <laughs> so, anyway, let me show you what I'm working on, but I've shown you some of whoever gets whoever wants some of the undersea like i said i've already had a couple ladies send me an email picture saying see i've got my background some pieces pulled and i will send it to you if i've never sent you anything please send me your name and address and i'm gonna whatever i can put in a business size you know business size envelope one of these then i We'll mail them to you. And luckily, I don't have to go to the post office. I don't know if Jody's here. I have not been to the post office yet. But I finally just finished making. This week has zoomed past, ladies. Uh-oh. Hold on. It's somewhere in here. Well, now I can't see it. But I know I showed Mark earlier. I made Russell's little giraffe so it's somewhere around here but anyway so once i get that stuff then i can have everything ready to go to the post office so all right lisa so but you have to promise to you know don't don't go wearing makeup and getting all fancy to come into the zoom because we just want to have fun and if you see me with that, especially without mascara and stuff, you know, I kind of go pale. So it'll be a lot of fun. Okay. Um, oh, dear sweetheart, I got, I got stamps. I got stamps and I've got envelopes. I'm good to go. Okay. But don't forget, if I've never sent you anything, and even if I have sent you something, send me an email to say, Deb, include me in the undersea um, accessories. What do we want to call them? <laughs> I'm going to be said, well, let me show you for some people who haven't been on here. All right. I've got the Angelina fabrics, but I've also got this, which I saw as it was supposed to be Christmas tree tinsel. And I said, oh, my God, that would be so cool for underwater stuff. As the, as the little arm of one lucky person will get the lobster. And if you send me an email, if you see one you particularly like, mention it. 
shell, octopus, I mean, jellyfish. That's not an octopus. That's a jellyfish. Okay, and then I've got all these little, and you're not going to get a whole bundle. I can't fit all that much into an envelope, but you'll get a good size piece that, but I mean, look at all this. Look at all these. I, I tried to get as many different kinds as I could to offer you. And the I love the chenilles. I've got it in tan and I've got it in green. And then I've got lots of eyelash yarn, regular yarn, some more chenille. This cool yarn that's great for all kinds of plants and things. And then look at this stuff. This would even make a really good jellyfish. All right. But I've got this color. Then I've got this cool orange stuff. And then I've got this cool stuff. And then I'm putting you bubbles and eyeball fabric. K-facet, which is really good for fish eyeballs and bubbles. And then I cut up a whole bunch, a whole bunch of fish. So I've got a whole bunch of this, whole bunch of these kind of fishes that I'm going to send, you know, send you a couple of. And then here's a dolphin that somebody will get and some under. Oh, that just reminded me. So I've got some of these. Then I've got a whole bunch of these scraps that have fishes and undersea things for you. Then I have a scrap of, I have a scrap of shells, starfish. Then some miscellaneous seahorses and crabs and things. And then some background fish. So like a school of fish that doesn't really have color. It's in the background. Then some of this cool stuff with all different kinds of plants. And then some more of these fishes. Got a bunch, 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 bunch of these. And then some more. I made sure to get... I think Miss Susan loves the those clownfish. So I made sure to get some of those for her. Some individual little fishes that were pretty. And lastly, I have a few sea turtles. So, Nemo, that's it. Yes, the clownfish. So, as you see... I have a lot of things, a lot of fun things to share with you. And um, I'm hoping to get them out tomorrow if possible. So if you are, and don't worry, if you don't have your background that you can show me yet. Because um, I just don't want to send it to everybody. I want people who really are going to give this landscape, an underwater landscape quilt done. So, okay. I pulled out some more fabric because I'm thinking it would be fun to make my own design fish. And if you belong to our group, I put a whole file. Look at this. Wouldn't that be cool on a fish? But I put a whole file of patterns that I found free online. And um, I thought this was kind of cool too. So I just went and started pulling fabric. You know how I just got the closet straight? I pulled a bunch of fabric and got it messy again. Yes, Susan, you may have. If you think of it, Susan, if you could shoot me an email so that I don't forget. Oh, that's wonderful. That's terrific sequence. Yes, I do even. I have sequins if you want. Put that in your email to me, whoever wants a few sequins. So let me show you what I'm doing. Okay. here I want to show you remember I said last week that I wanted to try to make bubbles so I did I worked on bubbles today 
So let me bring this forward and show you. Whoops. Don't mess. Don't mess up my screen. What did I do? Okay. So let me bring you down here. And I found I tried a couple ways. Somebody had mentioned mixing two-part epoxy. Okay, but I love sharing. So don't worry. Don't worry. Anybody wants it, I'm happy to share. It's just a, a single little stamp. So it's whatever you wish. Okay. I need... What did I do with my paint palette? I lost my paint palette. I told you everything is all confusing right now. Okay. I will use this. I will use this for my paint palette. I took some just white acrylic paint, you know, whatever kind you buy from the store, and I put a little bit on the pan. And you don't need much, trust me. Whoops. Let me put that back in there. You don't need much. And what I did is I tried several different methods to see how I could get... Whoops. Uh-oh. Didn't mean to do that. Hold on. Okay. All right. I wanted to see how I could do good bubbles. Okay. So I'm going to move this over. I make a relatively smooth-ish layer of paint here. Okay. Then move my brush out of the way. Then I've taken, I have straws, and I've taken and cut two size straws. Okay. Oops, this end broke, so I better go with this end. Cut two size straws, okay? What I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it right onto this fabric. Get my paper towel. But I just take a straw and pick up some paint with it. And put, push it straight down on my fabric. Okay? Now... That makes a nice, that makes a nice little bubble right there. But then I found that bubbles should vary. So this one, I did a little bit of scrub to it. Then this one, I put a little more paint on one side than the other. Then one of these, I kind of overdid it. So it's like I did this, and then I slightly moved it off. See how it slightly moved off? That gives it a little bit of 3D effect. So let me do that again. You do this, then you kind of move it slightly off and get, look at that. Isn't that cute? And I didn't eat, when I first got them slightly off, I didn't realize, and then when this one, you can kind of lean a little bit to give more white paint on one area. But I love the the two the two dip bubbles. Okay, so I'll put another one here, another one there. Then now I'll take my smaller straw because bubbles come in different sizes, and come back in with smaller bubbles. So I found the what works for me the best I can think of. If any of you else come up, I was going to try to use two-part epoxy and make um, real bubbles. But then Mark said, well, hon, won't they kind of get messed up when you fold the quilt? And I thought, well, he's probably right. But I was trying to look for real 3D bubbles. But is that cute or what? So everybody has straws. Everybody has little white, you know, acrylic little art paints that you buy from Joann's or wherever. And 
this way, you can now do bubbles. So what do you think? Yeah, now that's a great idea. Use a little change color, change it to light blue. That is a great idea. And then just keep your straws cleaned out. And there you go. So I thought I would show you that I, for some reason, it finally came to me. I, I usually think and think and think. And if I get lucky, it'll finally come to me. So that's what I came up with. And I don't know, maybe I don't have the right kind of two-part epoxy resin, but I couldn't make it work worth a poo. But anyway, and if you want something special from the whole box of collection, so far I only have like two or three people that I know I'm sending it to. So let me know, and I'm happy to share. And I'll let this dry. But I think those bubbles came out really cute. And you put them wherever you want to. Hi, Vicki Robles. So that's how I, that's the idea I came up with to make bubbles. All right. Now, today I really did some searching through all my, um, I, I did a, a search online for ocean wreaths, reefs, wreaths. I'm not sure how you say that. <laughs> and I found free downloadables like these that give me an idea of how to do some corals. These are all examples of coral. These are examples of different uh, mollusks or animals with shells. Then I found some patterns and I can size them to make my seahorses whatever size I want. There are those reef plants again. Here are some stingrays or skates, whatever name you want to call them. And here is a really pretty pattern for seaweed or kelp. Okay. So, oh, hot fix gems would be great, Julie. That would be great. Now, let me show you real quick what I came up with for my folder of ideas. Because, you know, I'd be lost without my folder for ideas. People think that artists just know how, how they want to do something. They just, you know, know what they want in their artwork. Well, look at this. So... I'll just do real quickly show you a few of the things that I got off the internet. Okay, hold on just a second, sweeties. Oh, don't put your finger in a hot light bulb. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to run through real quick to show you some of the good things that I saw online. See this right here? I'm going to try to replicate that in just a moment. But I figured this first will help ground me with colors. And then I can go in for specific plants. I love the plate-like quality of some of these corals. I want to make sure to do that. So I went through, put all these in a little folder, and then I will go through these over and over. Like this one, this one has starfish and what starfish look like on the bottom. That was important for me to know. And what colors? So, up oh, there we go with the clownfish. That's the anemone. And anemones are poisonous, but they get stung from the time they're early. And so then the poison no longer bothers them. 
and it works to, it that's what you call a symbiotic relationship where they get protection from predators and the anemone gets cleaned up and kept healthy so oh a blue starfish i saw a black and white underwater snake there we go that's the coral that look like a dinner plate i would do some of those and as usual, I'm going to try to do some 3D things because I love doing 3D things. But do you see how much is out there that you can find? Look at this stuff. It's beautiful. I love, look, at, I would love to do that turtle up close with his eyeball looking at you like that. Because you think that turtle has seen so much and been to so many places. Then look, I found these drawings that showed you what different seaweeds look like. How cool is that? So you can make your own. And don't forget, you can take ribbon and you can crunch it and bend it and fold it. And here are different kinds of plants like sea cucumbers, the, um, starfish, things that are alive but are in plant, what they look like plant form. But here are some more. I think I might be down at the end. Okay. So I hope that helped you see, and I just have a folder ready that's named Undersea, and as I go online, you go to Google, and then you click on Images, type in what you want to see, and then click on Images, and then you've got them. So, okay, thank you for, for looking at that with me. And what I was going to do was try to do one of those fans. I don't, let me see if I can hold on. I'm trying to find it again. Where is that fan? Here it is. Is this it? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to bring this up big. So I'm going to try to. <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to see how, how are all of you feeling? Um, are you hanging in there with the worry? I mean, how, how are y'all doing? Oh, good. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Good. Yes. Yeah, send me and let me know. I get it. I get such pleasure from sharing with you because to me, that's the best way to live. I enjoy my fabric more if I've shared a little bit of it. You know, it's just, it, that's fun for me. That, that's my thing. Oh, you're down with bronchitis. I'm sorry, Maureen, Col Maureen Colas. I'm very sorry. I think I, I know that your name is Colas now, and I don't always have to say the last name anymore, but I wanted to say it until I made sure to remember. So, okay. All right. Patricia Fry is here. There's Jody, and she's from, hold on, Chillicothe, Chillicothe. She's from Chillicothe. <laughs> I try very hard to practice things because you know what? Words fail me. Images, faces, I never forget a face. Words, that's a little different. <laughs> so it is so good. I'm so glad to see Patricia Fry. And Patricia, did you end up finding dolphins? Because I, I found a couple that I had to share. Chillicothe that I Chill it coffee. Chill it coffee. So I hope I said it right. So it's it's one of those words. It's really cool looking, but you're like, I have no clue. <laughs> oh, all right. So I'll show you my quilt and what I'm working on right this moment. And I've decided a couple things. Okay. I've decided a couple things. You've seen this before, and I started working on it in a class I took four years ago. I will put, I'll make sure that there are copies of these on our group's website for you also. But um, I started this at a class I took at Lancaster. What I've decided to do is to add, I want to add, oh, wow. You can just pull this. That's great. This this netting, watch. It's like you can tear it like you would fabric. I need, I want to make one of those fan plants 
and but I need enough layers of this for it to show. I may end up, well, I'll see. I may end, I was thinking I might end up having to put it in front of fabric. But I'm wondering if I get enough layers, will it work? Okay. Oh, good job today. And, and you know what? Anybody coming in, make sure to send me a note that, hey, I would like to have some of the stuff for the undersea and make sure I know you're really doing it. And because that's important to me, I, I want to share if people are really serious. <coughs> Pardon me. That was a sneeze. I think this is going to show. But then I was sitting here saying, how in the world do I hold this together? I may be able to try to sew it together. But then I got out. I got out some of this steam a seam light and shape. Whoops. Don't want anything too sharp. All right. So see what I've done now? And then I'm going to take this. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to work. I've turned my iron down to halfway because I don't want to melt my netting. Oh, that's nice. Isn't, that, isn't Rick sweet? Um, these are two separate pieces of fabrics in the background. See right here? They were two fabrics I got from the country store four years ago that had, they were in the same collection. So one was like a background, the other was a stripe. And, okay, now let me see. I don't know if this is going to work, girls, but let me try. I'm going to put this right here. Luckily with steam seam, this is a light one, so that's good because um, I don't want it to ooze all through everything now let me see oh boy this this is scary for me but i would rather try this first okay all right i would rather try this first see if it works before i have you do it okay that was smart these are the outside pages from other steam seam package pages I've used. I always save them, so I have plenty. Aha, now I'm pulling off this paper. Let's see if you can figure out what I'm doing here. Now, fold this back here. Put another sheet of this here. See what I'm doing? Yeah, I'm thinking, was it Pat Fry and Kathleen sent me pictures, I think. Okay. I think it worked. Now I have a firm. Look at this. Do you see? And I'll save these for when I iron it onto the fabric, if I iron it. I'll probably try to make it stand out like this. So now what I'm going to do is cut. I don't know if you can kind of see there's a line. There's a line I can see that I can follow the fan shape of the steam seam. But I thought, how can I build the steam seam thick enough so it's like it really is something? Okay, so now I'll come down here, and then I'll come up here, and here I go. Now I've got, and I can take and stitch it down like this. Let me get my trash can. Now, what I'm going to do... And this is kind of how I'm going to go with you through these kind of things. 
is just trial and error, see what happens. Um, and then if it works for me, you might want Okay? All right. Now, let me load up. I'm going to load up this orange thread. And I probably could have done a, a, a color a little bit closer, but I'm going to try this. Let me try this and see what happens. I mean, the worst happens. This is how I feel about trying these things. The worst thing that can happen is you toss it in the trash can and you try again. I mean, come on, ladies. This is why we have fun. Okay. So thread this needle. There we go. All right. Cross your fingers. Here I go. I'm going to try. Let me start down in the corner here. Let me try this. All right, I don't know if this will work, but let me see. I'm going to bring a stem right up here. I'm going to hit that and then I think this is going to work. I'm going to bring a stem up here to this point. All right. Okay, now I'll bring a stem up from this point, making that stem area at the bottom nice and sturdy. And this is just a cheap old spool of thread I've had probably 40 years. All right. Now it's funny, the stitches are doing a little oddly, but that's okay. Oops, ran out of thread. But do you see how this, do you see how this looks? Hi, Adele. Hello, sweetie. Okay, let me bring this. Whoops. Let me thread my thread again. All right. This was cheap old thread back when it was made. And now with it being older, it just wants to break all the easier. Okay. But, you know, it's going through a sticky fusible, and rough netting. So I don't blame it. Okay, let me see what I can get going. Oops. Oh, no. You know what's happening? Yeah, the stickiness is getting. It's gumming up my needle. Okay, so my needle's going to have to be cleaned or replaced before I do something else. But let me try this real quick. I'm going to make it narrower, and then I'll try some branches off this way. Woo! Okay, come on. Come on. Oh, it says, nope, it's too sticky, but... This would be worth it. And what I would do from here is just take some alcohol and wipe off my needle and keep using that needle until I did any of these type things. Once I had done all of these, then what I would turn around and do, in fact, here you can see it gathered thread up on the bottom. But this, okay, you see it? I think that's awesome. So I will keep working on this. But that way I can have these fans and I can fold up the bottom and stitch them and stitch them into place. What do you think? You like it? Okay. All right. So once I finish doing all the little branches and stuff, yes, I can add ink tents. 
That's exactly, if it's too hard to keep sewing through, then I can always draw it in with ink tents. And the nice thing is, in sewing these stems has made it stiffer. So I can come up here and like tuck it in somewhere there. But this way, I'm going to have it three dimensional. Okay, so now, so now, I, now did you see how I did that? I used the steam -a seam light. I used it on half heat and used these pressing cloths on either side. Now, recently, I had a little problem. I was doing some work with steam -a seam and where is it? Hold on, ladies. I was doing some work with steam -a seam and my iron got messed up. I don't see where it is, but what I did is I read in a book, I, I'm reading these landscape books, and it said, if your iron gets gummy, use a new sheet. I'm, I'm, I'm not gone through the dryer. A new sheet of a dryer sheet and iron on it. And you know what? It worked. It worked. So I wanted to show you some cool things I found. I've showed you the red netting before. And then I found this. I'm trying to think of what you call this. Um, it's not tool. It's finer. Um, it starts with a C, I believe. But this would make a wonderful, you know, you could just take and gather this all up. Oh, that's a great idea, Kathleen. Thank you. So... And then Bonnie had sent this in with an order, and I will be using some of this. That's beautiful. And this might be good to, you know, use as part of the water, too. But anyway, what I've decided that I'm going to do is I have, whoops, okay, let me, okay. I put this down, okay? I'm going to give you all a piece of this. But this kind of looks like a reef, and it's got all different kinds of coral and stuff. Then I'm going to try to do a more brown blah reef here. And on this, I'm going to try to make those plate-type coral. So... Uh, and I'm going to build this up even more. Where did I put this fabric? Here it is. So I thought I would build this up even a little more. And I'm using, it's an ombre, so I'm using the darker of the stripes with it. So let me pull some out of here. And I just rip. That doesn't bother me a bit. I keep my iron handy, and I go ahead and iron it back flat. But I feel like I don't have time to cut it all pretty. Okay. And so now I haven't. Mm, let me see. I'm trying to figure out I want to make a plate one of those plate kind of things to come out here I have a lot of fabric I made this really big so let me see I'm just cutting this edge. Scrunch it. Yeah, I could do that. Okay. So this, see, this is going to be one of these plate kind of corals that I saw that I really loved. So let me get my glue. Stay up. All right, 
Here I go. But I thought I would make a wreath, a coral wreath here. And I have lots of room. So now I'm going to glue this in place. Let me glue this down real quick. I don't want to glue all these little these little wispy poos down because I'm going to tuck fish in and out of them. So I have kind of like a peekaboo effect. So let me glue this. And when I glued these down, it showed some wet glue spots, but once they dried, the glue spots went away. So there, now I have one of those kind of coral plates. And I think I will do another one right here. And see how I just I just kind of wing it when it comes to cutting it. It doesn't have to be perfect, and it doesn't have to be straight. And only I know how I really wanted it to look in case it doesn't work out. <laughs> and I'm not telling. <laughs> okay, let's see. Ooh, you see how that, you see how that's looking? I like it. And you'll notice if you look at some of your, the images you look, you use for research and to copy, you'll notice that some areas of the wreath are monochromatic in color. Some areas are very bright, and some are just monochromatic or dull, actually dull. So, then what I think I'm going to do is over here, do an anemone. Anemone? <laughs> anemone, anemone, anemone. And then I can put my clownfish popping in and out of the anemone. <laughs> so, okay. So anyway, I'll put this fabric aside for the moment. I also, I went looking for my fabric and just like, what else do I use? And see, you're not going to use sea-like fabrics. You're going to have all different kinds of fabrics. But like this might be a perfect anemone. <laughs> I'm trying to say it right. <laughs> okay. So let me try to cut out. Oh, I know what I was going to show you. So tonight I used... Um, Tonight, I used my foam hair curlers to curl my hair. And I decided to clean out my curler bag because I had some, I had some in there for years and years. Well, guess what? These look like sea cucumber type things. Look at them. Aren't they precious? So, it's, I almost was ready to throw them in the trash can. I went, wait a minute. I saw sea plants that looked just like this. Or maybe, it's, maybe it was coral even. And, but I saw some plants that had the hole in them that looked just like this. So, guess what? Now, these are going to be on here too. Isn't that cute? Like, I can all pile them up like this together. And, once again, I'll have that 3D look. How cute is that? So, I've got these also. But, let me try now to do an anemone. There, I think I said it. Yay! I better be able to say it. I took marine biology and 
went to Key West, so I better know. All right, I'm going to use... Now, to do these anemones, the little ends are very... I mean, they're little, tiny, little tubules. There's a new word. And I'm not going to cut out and sew around tiny little tubules. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is cut out this mass of fabric. I'm going to glue it down. Let me press it. And don't forget, always check the back of your fabric, too, to see, is that a color I would want to use? Now I'm going to glue it down. All right. I will glue it down, and I'm going to kind of settle it in on top of this coral so it looks like it was, it's been here. Ages and ages and ages. Okay. Then I'm going to, let me go get them. I'll be right back. Now, I'm going to show you how I can take some of my ink tints and draw those lines to show, to act as those little tubes. Okay, let me bring this in a little closer. And I can come in here and draw the little tubes. Let me find, hold on just a second. I want a darker color. Okay. And you know, some of them look like they had dark on the ends, but others you could take and use this white if you thought they, you saw some that looked white on the end. But anyway, let me get some red in here, but you could just do, just do lines all over and that's what I love about the fabric because it already had lines in it okay let me do a little more orange and a little more brown and I'm going to show you something don't get bored yet But watch what I'm going to do. Let me go find him. Let me see. Let me find him. Okay. Let me get a real pretty little clownfish here. Here he is. All right. Let me cut him out pretty good. You know what? Before I cut him out, hold on one second. What did I do with my... Here it is. Okay. 
before I cut him out, I'm going to go ahead and fuse him. Whoops. Let me bring it. When I zoom in too much, this arm is wanting to sink into the west. <laughs> I'm going to have to fix this. Come on. Stay still. But what I'm going to do is cut out this fusible. I love steamacine too because I don't have to have it perfect. Then I'm going to tear, put one side of this off. Let me see the other side if I can get it. Let me see which side it'll let me peel. Oh, good. Okay. And I'm just going to then stick this on the back like this. Whoa, no, my finger pulled some of it off. Hold on. Let me put it. Oh, goodness, my arms faded into the sunset. Mark's going to have to do some more repair work for me. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Ah! <laughs> so, okay. I think I might need to get a new one of those lamp arms, maybe a little stronger one than a $16 one. But I've got it on the back of here. I'm going to come along real quick and cut everything off of it except for this little cute little clownfish. All right. Here we go. Come on, little clownfish. Trying to cut him out so I don't bore you to, dear, to tears because I know our time's about done. But I'll cut him out right here. And all right. Now watch what I do, which I think this is really cool. Okay. I'm going to take and cut a little slit in this anemone. And then I'm going to cut a little slit over here. Okay? So see how I just cut? I just cut a little bit right here. Because the glue's not finished drying. Then I'll peel off the paper. Here we go. Now... I'll lift this up. Come on. I'll lift this up and pull him. Look at this. Look at this. Do you see now? Now he's tucked in behind some of that anemone. And then I'm just going to take and press him into place. Do you see how easy that was? That is very, very easy. Oh, my arm. Are you talking about my arm? Yes. The shower door. I was, I opened the shower to turn it on. And the shower door came back at me and, and the inner, the inner little handle scratched me. And Mark got real worried. He went and checked and he said, it's not that sharp. I said, no, it just happened to get me just right. But anyway, look at this. Is that the cutest? That is how easy it is to make that. See? So, we are going to have such fun. Gather your fabrics, you know, and see with this, like this turtle up here. Come on. With this turtle up here, I kind of had this, the seagrasses kind of blocking them a little. But I'm going to do some more with tucking these in. And I think it should be a lot of fun. And I can put little fish in, like, you know, because fish like to eat any kind of food that might fall into coral. So they do a good job of cleaning it. 
But as you see, so now I've kind of shown you how to put some of your background in. I've just started building my wreath part. I've got a lot more to add. And I haven't, you know, I want to not only use some of the printed fish, but I want to make some fish of my own with creative fabric. Because to me, that's a lot of fun. So, for right now, at least I've shown you how easy it is to make one of these fans. And how realistic you can make it. The reef, the anemone, with him tucked in it. Because remember, clownfish hide in the anemone. So, once I get my my land um, events in here, once I get where I want to be reef, where I want to be seaweed, all of that, then that's when I'll start choosing my fish, my turtles, all of that to go in here. So, and I'm going to make it its own little world. And like most of you, I've got a surprise that I'm going to put in here also. So, won't tell you what it is yet. But I hope, I hope that it, that helped. Whoops. Hold on, guys. Okay. I hope that that helped give you a few ideas of how you can turn simple things into a real creative piece of work. So... So I hope you like that. And um, then I was going to talk to you. How are you? How are you all doing? Give me five minutes with you just to, you know, we'll we'll do some more on this next week. But how is everybody doing? I found that last night I got a little anxious. So um, it was a little hard for me to fall asleep. I fell asleep on the couch, went back to bed early, and couldn't fall back asleep. So how are y'all doing? Oh, good job, Cheryl Hogan. And please remember, send me an email if you want to share some of my undersea, what did we call it, accessories, accessorizing. <laughs> and I'll send you an envelope, whatever I can fit into a legal length envelope. But um, just send me, try to send me a little email or something that shows you really are um, going to try it. And then I'll be glad to share with you. So, but how are y'all feeling? Oh, good. So Susan's fine. As long as her boss keeps bringing her wine, she's good. Your harbor seal. You can make it lighter. Hmm. Because it must be a pre-printed har harbor seal. I'm sure I saw it. I'm trying to remember right now. Some You can try on the back of the fabric coloring it white, like white with a crown, or put it on white interfacing, see if that might lighten it up. You can take ink tents if you've got it and try to lighten it, or you can use just a little few drops of bleach in a little bit of water and paint it on. Ugh, that's scary, though, because sometimes it might take the wrong colors out. And, um, but to lighten them up, that's tricky. What you could do is get really bold, use a lighter fabric and try to make your own. So, um, sometime we have to do that. Yes. You know, I'm tomorrow. I'm, I've, I've been thinking about this. I'm going to tomorrow morning. I'm going to take grommet and we're just going to go out and drive around. We're not going to stop anywhere, but we're just going to go take a little drive. Even if it's just right around my neighborhood. So that we feel like we're doing something different. Oh, thank you. Yes, anybody, I would love for you to subscribe and hit like. And uh, so anyway, well, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Would you like to have a uh, two-hour sew-in tomorrow around 1 p.m. Eastern? Or, or are you feeling good? Because if it'll help you... For us to have, um, last time we had a four-hour one, and YouTube 
lopped off half of it. I guess they they only do a certain length. You know, if we want to do more, we have to do it for up to two hours, just under two hours, stop it and start it again. <laughs> but tell me if you tell me if you would feel better if we did a little sew together or are you okay to wait till Sunday? How are you feeling? I know, Susan. If you were just as old as me, you could retire. <laughs> Stay young, Susan. Stay young. <laughs> so, but uh, those of you who are home during the day, you let me know if you want to do a little, a little two-hour show together, or are you okay to, to wait till Sunday? Because Mark works upstairs. So for me, it's like, I try to avoid his area too much while he's working anyway. The, oh, are y'all going to stitch together? I love that. You know, it's whatever we can do to make ourselves feel good. <laughs> Just piddling around. Oh, piddling is a good Southern word. So Cheryl's okay till Sunday. Tomorrow is good for you, Kathy. Okay. Oh, and you know what? As long as you're busy and happy, that's good. What I just want to make sure. Okay, I'll have to do that. I'll have to bring some handwork to do with y'all. But um, what I worry about is, is some of you who are home all day and can't, you know, don't have family visiting or don't know what, quite what to do with yourself. And that's where I'd like to be there for you. You enjoy the company, Sherry? Okay. All right. So let's try it at 1 p.m. tomorrow and let's see how it goes. Come and go as you want. This is only if you'd like company, but if you don't want to, that's okay too. I just, uh, I, I just care very much about all of you. We want to make sure you're not feeling claustrophobic or what is it called? Cabin feverish. So <laughs> all righty. Well, y'all have a good evening. And I'm going to go enjoy a little bit of time with Mark. And uh, I'm feeling tired again. Heck, I might be in bed early again tonight. <laughs> so I will see you tomorrow. We'll do some sewing. I'm going to find some fun sewing to work on. So that'll be great. Susan, thank you so much for all you do for us. You are a doll baby and so pretty. I loved seeing you in person last night. That was so much fun. So I will see all of you tomorrow. And uh, tonight, I, I think I'll take up the envelopes and start putting goodies in them for y'all. So take good care. I will definitely. Oh, Susan, I trust you. Susan, you can have anything in this room, darling. Nothing's too, too much for Susan. Cheryl Lemon is here. And Adele, we're tickled to have you. And I hope you got in our uh, group. I hope you got in our group, Sio. But, oh, I love my Susan. Just love my Susan. So, anyway, it was so good to see Cheryl and Adele and Julie. And uh, Julie, Lime Zombie. I'm hoping Julie was your name because I ain't calling you Lime Zombie. <laughs> Take good care of Pat Fry. How wonderful to see you. Oh, and don't forget that Pineapple Fabrics is having their sale today and tomorrow and today, tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday, I think. I went in today, picked some things. It was sold out before I got to actually buy it. But I had fun shopping. <laughs> See, oh, I got hiccups. Y'all take good care. Love you guys, too, very much. Bye-bye, guys. Do something fun for yourself. You, you deserve it. And I've got the hiccups. Bye-bye, sweeties. June. Okay, June. I'm going to remember that. June. Bye-bye, <laughs> June.